What's up, Humble Power Ass Group? Today we're doing da -da, ball joints. Dana 30 comes out of a lot of different Jeeps. Let's talk. So, before we get this video started, I want to say something to you people, okay? When you guys see what I'm working on here, and I think if you've been watching the past two videos I released, uh, that's on a JK. This is what we're doing ball joints on. Don't exit the video. Why am I saying that? Here's why. My channel has been pretty much based off of uh, YJ's, TJ's, and stuff like that. And so every time I drop another rig in that's not a YJ, that's not a TJ, oh my gosh, the world's coming to an end. It's not a YJ, so this cannot be what I need. Ball joints is one of those things that is the same across most almost every four-wheel drive vehicle, okay? I said almost, and don't you guys get out there getting all froggy, correct me now, okay? I know what's up. But on your Jeeps, your Dana 30s, Dana 44s, your ball joints installation or replacement, whatever, it's going to be about the same. So even though this rig here is a 2011 JK four-door, doing the ball joints is going to be the same on a YJ or a TJ, especially TJ. TJ's got the coil springs, YJ's have leaf springs. So actually, uh, YJ's are easier because the daggone coil springs are not in the way, which you'll see that later in the video. So everyone, if you need to learn how to do ball joints on your YJ, XJ, uh, anything that's got the Dana 30 or Dana 44 front end, okay? Well, heck, for that matter, Chevrolet's, Ford's, stuff like that, there's several that have got ball joints like that as well, so it can still help you. So don't get that mentality just because it's not the exact vehicle you have that this video is not for you. This video is for you if you got ball joints on a four-wheel drive rig, okay? So watch the video, learn a little something. Eh, quit gabbing. Let's roll. So I'm sure it goes without saying. First thing you want to do is get it jacked up, get your tire off, get your wheel tire, slide up underneath there for safety. Jack stand right there, holding everything up. But why is my jack there? That is a very good question. Let me explain something to y'all. When we change out the ball joints, we're going to have to change, pull the knuckle off here. To pull the knuckle, we got to pull the axle. To pull the axle, it's coming out of that tube right there. What might happen? you might get some grease coming out of it. So put the jack underneath there, pick the axle up just a little bit, make that axle tilt this way. That push all the grease back down this way. So whenever you pull that axle out of there, you'll get minimal drippage coming out the end of that tube. Think about it. So to start out with, you wanna get your tie rod and your drag link out of the way because you wanna pull this whole knuckle off and we're also gonna pull the brakes off. So I was putting my drag link and my tie rod stuff in I thought, hmm, I'm going to check the tire, uh, ball joints real quick. I put a wedge underneath that tire, picked it up and down a little bit, and I saw just a little bit of movement coming from that top ball joint. So guess what? We got to change it out. So drag link, tie rod, take them off. Take that nut right there. Take off that nut. And if you're really lucky, you can just pop it right there with a uh, dead blow hammer. It'll drop down. You may have to get the fork, come inside here, hammer it in here, knock it down. You never know what you might have to do. I'm not going to do it to these because these are brand new, so I'm not going to booger them up. What some people do, they'll take that nut here and run it down until it's just about flush with the end of the uh, pivot ball right here, the top of the post or whatever you call it, contraption. Then they'll take a smack out with a hammer. It doesn't booger up the threads on the post where it's coming through, the, the taper shaft. I'll link up a video to where I changed out a... Uh, tie rod on a JK and you can see how I did in that video. So when you do cruise over to check out that video for the JK how to take off the tie rod, remember something, the drag link and the tie rod both have that same tapered post coming through the knuckle. So I don't believe, I don't remember honestly, I'd have to go back and look at the video. I don't think I did the drag link on that particular um, Jeep. It's a different Jeep from this one right here. Uh, but I did do the tie rod, and so it's going to be the same. Same tapered shaft, so no big deal. Alrighty, so let me get these out of the way, and then we're going to get the brakes off. Now, when you take your brake caliper off, this right here is a 13 millimeter. You'll take this bolt right here out, and what happens sometimes is a slider pin right here will want to keep moving on you. Because what this job is, you slide in out of here to allow the caliper to float. But when it wants to turn, when you're taking out that boat, it's a total pain in the tail. So what happened? What can you do, huh? Get your pair of uh, vice grips, lock onto the flange of the boat right there, 
lock onto it, it'll butt up against the caliper right there, then you can break that loose and take it on out. Now once you get your caliper unbolted, get your wire tie, piece of wire, something, shoe string, boot string, I don't care. Tie it up to your coils right there because you do not leave your caliper hanging by the brake line. That will damage your brake line. Now I've got brand new brakes on this rig, so, but you guys can check out the past videos where I replace front brakes and rear brakes. So, I don't want to damage anything. Hang it by wire tie. Yep. What's next? So next thing we got to do is take off this caliper bracket right here, and we got a bolt there and a bolt there. I've got a 13 16 ready to go on it, or 21 millimeter work too, but my 21 millimeters kind of went AWOL at the moment. I don't know where it went to, so. Hmm. 13 16 it is. Get them off. Once you get the caliper bracket off, your rotor, come right on off. So what do we do next? Huh? Well, you would think that you got to go ahead and pull your unit bearing out of there, which is a good guess. It really is. But before you can do that, look right there on the unit bearing. Now, what would that be? That would be your anti-lock brake sensor. It jumps over here. You got a wire goes through there. It comes through this bracket here. Be careful because that thing will cut you. It comes right here. It goes under right there. It cuts up through here because there's the uh, tubing up to right there. So what you want to do is disconnect that, pull your wire all the way through, and have it set and ready so whenever you pull the unit bearing off, you can bring the wire and everything out at one time and you don't tear anything up. Cool? Cool. So we got it unplugged, fed back through the run of the spring and all that. And then we get to this bracket right here. Don't grab it up here, pull. Hey, come on, get out of there. Get you a screwdriver, get back underneath here and pry it back out because that rubber pattern there's pretty thick. So get your screwdriver, get back in behind here, push that out. It comes out, I ain't gonna say easier, but you get no less damage. Because this right here has been tugged or pulled a time or two from somebody. And you see right there, you already got that fracture, that crack right there. So that's a strain relief right here. If you take a fracture and crack it too much, then you're going to mess up your analog brake sensor. The next thing you know, you're throwing a code, then you got to change it, and yeah, all that no good fun stuff. I might actually pull that out. Watch me fool around and cut myself. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut myself. So I'm going to get a screwdriver right in behind here, push on the this side of that thick pad right there. So here's the sensor wire. I've got it all fished out of there. And so you would almost think of, I could take out that alley head screw right there and just pull it right out. Well, yeah, technically, I guess you probably could, but here's the deal. I don't like upsetting anything going on inside here. When I'm pulling the whole thing out anyway, whenever you pull the unit bearing or the hub or whatever you want to call it, your backing plate right here is going to move. So that'll allow the wire and everything to spawn out at one time. I really don't like messing with the sensor when it's seed in there no more than I have to. So now that we've got that wire situated, we're going to get in behind here and start taking up the unit bearing right there. 13 millimeter 12 point. Every now and then you run across some bolts that are like ridiculously tight. So what do you do? You put your pipe on the end of your breaker bar and pop it loose. Oh yeah, I want to give you one more hint to your copper bracket. Roll your sticky bolts up the side there, thread them in a few turns so they don't go MIA on you. Right there, right there. Therefore it keeps your bolts organized. So I've got these broken loose now. I'm going to, go ahead and take them out. And hopefully the unit bearing acts like it's got some sense. I'm going to bring axle and all out at one time. Now once you get the bolts out, get you a dead blow hammer like this right here. Hit it on the back side. It should separate the unit bearing hub, whatever, from the knuckle. And you may pop it out a little bit. You see right, we got a little gap going on right there. On this side, I took me a screwdriver. Got like right down inside the ear right there. And drove it down the side there. And it's got to separate from the knuckle now. Now, if it gets really, 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 really cranky, hug up on here a little bit. Don't get too far out on the ear. Because if you do, you'll be able to break it out here. If you're not replacing the unit bearing, you'll want to break it if you don't have to. Because so I think these unit bearings are like $220, $230, $40, something like that. Because of that. And a lot of brake sensor being built into it. So, get in here like right there. Get it to separate. And once you get it separated, you can just keep you know, working your screwdriver around the hub or unit bearing and it'll eventually work its way out and then you pull axle and all at the same time when people are out wheeling oftentimes what they'll do is if they bust a uh, u-joint they'll keep a unit bearing and axle and everything all in one piece because then what you do if you're on the trail and you blow that u-joint you pull the unit bearing pull the axle and have this whole assembly already pre-made 
stash somewhere on your rig, slide the whole assembly back in, your replacement parts, and you're back on the trail and ready to roll. So now that I've got this separated, I'm going to try to get this hub out of there. Now I've got the hub right here ready to pull out. It's going to bring axle on all at one time right through the middle of the knuckle. I've got me a catch can here just in case I get some grease coming out of that axle. But again, that's why I've got my jack here picking up the, this end of the axle, making it tilt like this to keep the grease down on that end. We're going to hope that works. If not, put your catch can under so you don't make a mess. All right. I set the camera up so you guys can see this axle come out and hopefully everything cooperates. So there we go. What we got here? Packed in mud, looks like. Yep. You see right here, just the plate separate, and there is your wire for your analog brake sensor. Then you shimmy the knuck, the uh, U joint through the knuckle. See, it comes right on through. Then you pull the axle on out. And this is the long side axle, so it's going to be a uh, Coming on out of there for a bit. It keeps going and going and going. Ah, got it. And that smells like chew. So, yep. And see where I've got the axle tilted like this right here? I've got no grease coming out this end right here. So, I'm going to wipe this axle off before I drip all over this nice, pretty, clean concrete because this is not my shop. Uh, then we're going to worry about, work on getting this knuckle off. Now the next thing we're going to do, we got some little cotton keys right there. And right there. we got to get them out because we got to get these castle nuts off. So get you a pair of needle nose pliers, dikes, whatever you can do, get in there and bend them things out straight. Then you want to pull that thing out of there. So now that I finally got them cotter keys out of there, because they were rusted in that hole like crazy, what I ended up doing is getting in here with a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips, break it, going back and forth, breaking them off as flush as I could inside there, take a screwdriver, put it around the edges of where, where I uh, broke them off, tapped it through, finally made them break off and go up on through there. So yeah, they were fun. This rig has been in some water. So now we're going to take off that nut right there, 22. Here. Yeah. So now we're going to take off the top ball joint nut, 22 millimeter. And after you get the top one broke loose, break that bottom one loose. And I don't know what size it is because I ain't got the sockets here with me big enough, so I just use that wrench. I bought these things right here years ago. It's a three piece set that I got. If you guys, I have looked and looked and looked, I would love to have another set of these things. If you guys have any idea where I can find these, another set, man, it'd be awesome. Because I think Craftsman discontinued them a long time ago. These things rock. Just for boxing, they tough, they good. Save my tail many times. All right, get those nuts off. Try to get this knuckle off tonight. We got the knuckle loose. Do y'all see something that's a little bit askew? Do y'all see something that just quite doesn't look right? Do y'all see something that's absolutely I ain't gonna say that because I'm keeping my you know channel ready PG. See we're turning it down here. It's broke loose from the stud ball joint. Look up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Dude, ball joint done. So I beat that knuckle and beat that knuckle. It did ain't a budging. So what I'm gonna do is start breaking out the tools, put some pressure on it. Crank that thing down right there, put a little pressure on it, and then hit it. It should pop off. If not, we'll keep going. The artillery get a little bit heavier and heavier until we finally get that rascal off there. I am so curious. Let's do it. Well, I got it tied up and put about two rev two turns on that thing, and it popped it right loose. So, let me set the camera up. You guys got a better view. We're going to go ahead and take its knuckle on off and look at that ball joint. So, now that we got that knuckle out of the way, look at this ball joint right here. I'm wiggling it back and forth. Uh, probably a good eighth of an inch or so. Alright, upper ball joint fried. Check out the lower. Take it, rocking it back and forth, and right there it's got a really, really hard catch in it. 
pivoted around. I mean, it feels like it's got gravel or something. It just feels so rough. So ball joints are definitely shot. So first thing we need to do, we're gonna get that grease cup out of the way because whenever we start uh, pressing it, I have already taken the Zerk fitting out of the top and I pressed it a moment ago. When I pressed on the cup, it shot the grease out the top. So got the Zerk fitting out first because you need to make room for your adapters, which I'll show you here in a moment. And whenever you start to press in here, without the Zerk fitting, you get that, you make a mess. So, we're gonna take a screwdriver and pry that thing out of there. So just get up in here, grab all that grease cup, pry that sucker out of there. Got that out of the way. And up here where I made the mess up top, Get that slimy booger out of the way. And go ahead and clean this out, old grease out of there, because it helps keep your tools much more clean. So this kit right here, I ordered off of Amazon. It does good for mostly basic vehicles and stuff, but with uh, doing the Dana 30 fronts, or Jeep fronts, even Dana 44s, you need one more other adapter, which I ordered here, which obviously is not in there, because, and that is this part right here, because it goes, like this, which you'll see here in a moment, it goes up like this right here, it hits the bottom of that ball joint and presses the ball joint straight at the top, okay? So let's get all this set up. Okay, this right here is the specialty adapter and I'll link all these up below so you guys can uh, get what you need to do the job yourself. Uh, this particular adapter here, I'm not sure if you can pick it up at your auto parts store, it's the Chrysler adapter. Ball joint service adapter kit for Jeep and Dodge, so. I'll link this up so you guys can get you one. If nothing else, you buy this adapter right here, this kit, and pick up and pick up that kit right there at your local auto parts store, and you'll have what you need to service ball joints on the front of your Jeep. So what you got here is a set of rings that's in the kit that you'd pick up at your auto parts store, or if you want to order your own set, that's fine too. You got three different sizes. It'll be the middle size ring, okay? Because that has to fit over the outer diameter here you got two different diameters you got to worry about on these ball joints you got your small diameter here and the step which is your larger diameter you need your ring to fit over the larger diameter because what's going to happen as you press the ball joint upward this cup right here is going to allow that ball joint to come up inside of it and to come out of the um, C itself on the upper part of the C now we need one more part for the upper part that makes sense upper part for the upper part yeah, mm -hmm. sure Ta da This right here comes with that kit right there, and it comes from that corner right there. So what you want to do, you got these steps right here. The steps will line up up here. Take these steps. Boom. Oh, look at that. It's centered up. We're good there. Now, this part right here will come in from the bottom here. And then when we start pressing it, this presses that ball joint straight up to the middle of this tube right here. All right. So let's set the camera up and get it going. Okay, so we got our adapter set up. Want to take your press now, bring it up like this, hold that adapter in place. And I need to run this up a little bit. And get it set. And, and I'll, I'll give you guys a better angle here in a moment. Tighten it up until it gets seated. Tip right here of the jack shaft here fits down inside that little recess area to lock it in place. Then this adapter, you see it's sitting inside that little pocket right there that holds that in place. So as you tighten up your jack shaft, it presses down, pulls this part up, presses the ball joint up into this cap right here. Now, earlier in the video I told you I had the jack underneath this axle to prevent the grease from coming out. That actually uh, worked to my disadvantage. I'm used to working on YJs all the time, and I don't have to worry about anything being in the way up here. So my jack shaft, when I had the axle pick, picked up thinking the grease was going to run out the end of it, so far I haven't gotten any grease and the jack really isn't doing anything at the moment. But what it did, it allowed me to have room for the upper part of my ball joint press to clear the spring bucket up here. So I didn't get any grease coming out of there. I'm not saying you won't. I haven't checked the grease in the front of this axle right here. It may be low. I don't know. But I am going to be changing the grease in this axle, so we'll be checking that later. But you may have to set it down some to allow your jack shaft to clear the spring bucket so you can get in there with a wrench and tighten the jack shaft. 
And if it's sticking above the spring bucket, you can probably get a socket on it. But the thing it is, this part right here needs to be hit right on this if you do that. But here's the caveat to that. Your press will be set out of line with this right here, so it will not be pressing evenly, pressing that ball joint out. Me personally, I'm not a fan of that because then you're pressing the ball joint at a kind of an angle and you may end up scarring the inside of your C. So make sure it's a straight press, even if you've got to put a wrench on this right here. To do it, that keeps your jack shaft in perfect line with your ball joint and doesn't cause any kind of strain issues you know, on your C, okay? So, all right, let's set the camera up and I'm gonna put my wrench on that thing and tighten it up to pull the ball joints. So you guys notice right there at the end of it, I can tell that the uh, wrench was getting a lot lighter because I put the wrench up there and I was tight, you know, tightening the uh, jack shaft, which was squeezing all this together, pressing the ball joint out. Uh, right when it got to the point that I thought, hey, now I can actually do it without a cheater bar, I started felt it quite a bit lighter. I'm like, hey, now I can turn the camera back on and show you guys the final finale of the ball joint coming out. So uh, you guys notice also the sound dropped in that part of the area right there. I don't know, I may overlay some music into it or something, who knows. But I was actually jamming to some uh, uh, Stone Sour in the background. And being YouTube's, there are copyright issues and stuff like that. I don't want to get deemed, so I muted the sound so I didn't have to get that ding on my channel. That's it. Anyway. Now to get this bottom ball joint out, it's a little bit different, but not by a whole lot. So we're going to use the same ring right here, the middle ring. But we're going to use a different adapter. Let me show you. This adapter right here, we used it because the press actually had its uh, jack shaft sitting right here, pushing down. But what we need this time, we need the shaft of this ball joint right here to pass through the adapter. Which is when we switch adapters here, and that will slide through there. It'll go up here like this here, and that, you can't see it obviously, but right there where my pinky's hitting, is where the shaft of the ball joint is coming through. The adapter we're using is coming from that pocket right there. So here's how this is going to work out. Jack shaft part of your ball joint press goes up through the upper part of your C. The adapter here, right there, and it sets this little ring right. Uh, where am I at? This little ring right here on your uh, press. See that ring right there? It's going to fit in that little pocket right there to stabilize everything. So, we'll put my little ring back on because it fell off. Slide that up. I can't blame it on the camera this time. I just told you I'm not coordinated. So, put that right there. That comes up like this. Make sure it is seated inside that groove down here now. You take your jack shaft, run it down to the top of your ball joint, and just give it a little snug. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Is it time to crank the uh, jack shaft, press the ball joint out? Can I do that now? Some of you say, well, yeah, it's set up, it's ready to go. There's one thing I haven't done yet that I haven't shown you. I gotta show you the camera, move the camera and show you. Right there. We have a grease fitting right here. That is where you get the little needle style uh, grease guns. Press it right into that top right there, give it a pump. And it injects the grease down inside the ball inside the ball joint because you don't have a grease fitting right here on the top and of course there's done the shaft down here going through the uh, knuckle so you can't do it that way so you got to take that out flat screwdriver backs that out of there i've already kind of cracked it loose so it may look like it's easier than it's really going to be but take that out because here's what's going to happen if you forget to take that grease fitting out Odds are, if you really put the mojo to it and get you some Popeye spinach and stuff, you can probably press that ball joint on through. But here's what's going to happen. That little edge on that grease fitting right there is going to scar your lower C all the way down inside that. That will mess up your lower C and 
Is it going to be the end of the world? No. Is it going to prevent the other module from proceeding correctly? Yeah, odds are no. But it's going to be damage that does not need to be done. Period. So be sure to take out that little uh, grease fitting. And now we can press that baby on out of there. Look. There it is. Luckily, this ball joint, these ball joints aren't totally seized up in the seas. I have run into them to where they are like you got to put the, yeah, that, that to it before they'll come out. But luckily, this rig right here actually has been pretty sane working on it. But it is 2011, so, you know, there you go. It, had, it hadn't had too much time to get totally crusted. Now, I've already sort of cleaned up the top one. But you want to make sure you get you some uh, rags, brake cleaner, whatever you can do. Clean out the inside of that right there because you got a little bit of a grease film. So you want the inside of this right here as dry as you can possibly get it because you got to put your new ball joints in. And you don't want any crud, any kind of junk or anything like that to uh, be in there to interfere with the fit of the ball joint being pressed in. Because they are a pressed fit. So make sure you get all that inside there cleaned up real well. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Now I'll try to remember the order we took everything apart. First was the top ball joint, then we removed the bottom ball joint. That allows us placement of the press itself. Now for reassembly, how are we going to do it? That's right, we're going to do the bottom ball joint first because again, the placement of the press has to come up through the upper C. So what are we going to do? Here's our bottom ball joint. This ring right here, remember the three rings I showed you earlier, you had small, medium, and large. This is going to be the small because we want it to fit on that shoulder right there it's going to come up don't worry about your uh, grease cap yet because you want to crush it if you put it on right now you'll crush it with this right here so don't do it quite yet smaller cup see how it fits on that shoulder right there that's the way it's supposed to ride because it's going to press that up through the bottom part of the seat and remember this adapter here now we're going to use the small shoulder here because it's going to sit like that because if you notice the steps small medium large to accommodate those rings so that sits in there like that. This is going to come in from the bottom like this. So now we're going to take our press, feed it through the upper C, and remember those lit, that hole right here needs to sit inside that press and be seated properly. Now this cup right here, it doesn't have that area right there for the jack shaft to sit on. Because the jack shaft is going to kind of float on this part, but it's got that recessed area because your ball joint comes through the upper part of the C here. So we've got to put that there and make sure it's around that hole right there because your ball joint's got to come all through this. And I'll show you here in just a moment once we get pressed because I need the tripod there so I can have both hands free because, yeah, this is kind of a cumbersome little deal to fool with. And what you want to do is your press is going to want to rotate on you. So bump it all the way over onto the C like that so it doesn't move. You get it locked in place. Your jack shaft's in the middle of this adapter. This adapter right here, this cup, is set to where the ball joint is going to make it all the way through the lower C, lower part of the C, and fit up inside this right here. And this is all locked together to press it up inside there. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha. Alrighty, let's start cranking the baby down, press it up in there. The going in is probably not going to be as easy as coming out because you got brand new knurling on your ball joint. Knurling is, see those little teeth looking grooves right there that's what you call knurls and what it does as you press them up inside there they grip and kind of compress to the inside diameter of the lower C right there which makes them hold on really good and tight and not, not move
So you can see right there, the shoulder of that ball joint is now budded hard up against the lower part of the seat right there. It is complete. We have got that lower ball joint installed. Now that we've got that lower ball joint put in, I'm going to show you guys a couple things to look for. Now, dude, I am like dragging myself on the concrete trying to move that lower ball joint. That is where things are supposed to be. This is the lower ball joint that I took out. Look at that. I mean, I can pull it up and down, and like I showed you guys earlier, you know, right there, I can feel a really hard, scratchy notch. So this ball joint right here is wasted. But that, like I said, I'm dragging myself across concrete here, and that's where things are supposed to be. Just giving the indication of how worn out that sucker was. Now, what I told you about clearancing this cup right here when we was installing it, look right up here. So here's where your upper ball joint comes through your lower C. The inside diameter of this right here, see, it hangs. Well, I dropped it. See how it hangs there? That's because that ball joint is coming up through that inner C. So you gotta make sure you have that uh, adapter around the OD perimeter of that hole right there so that that ball joint will come up through that and fit in properly. If you have this right here hanging on top of it, as it's coming up through there, you're going to hit it and it's going to bottom out. It's going to be hard to turn. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, why can't I not install my ball joint? Because you're looking down here and you've got a huge gap and you're still cranking like crazy. You're trying to, why would the ball joint go in? This is the first thing you're going to have to look at because if you've got this off-centered, not allowing the ball joint to come up through that, it will stop it dead and you will not seat that ball joint properly. So, make sure that it's around the major diameter of that and you'll be good to go. Alright, upper ball joint time. So putting your upper ball joint in, you want to get a little bit creative because the spring bucket up here is all up in the way. What is supposed to happen is, well, on a YJ for instance, I know a lot of you guys who are on my channel know I work on YJs more than anything. YJs and uh, TJs often. But your TJs and your JKs, you're going to have a spring bucket here in your way. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I dropped the axle down to give me room to get up in here, which worked fine for pressing this out. But for now that I'm, uh, because pressing out, your press actually stays put because you're on the outer diameter of your ball joint. You're on the outside of it. Now we got to work on this slip right here, which is the inner diameter, as we might say. This cup right here is the shorter of the two options you have. This right here fits on, this right here is the one that comes with your rental kits. It fits like that. See? Beautiful, isn't it? Mm hmm So, that was like, way too long. So, we go with the shorter one. Great. Uh huh, you think? But what we gotta do is we gotta get right here and we gotta press that baby down inside there. Alright, all you rednecks, this is where you do not get, I'm gonna get me a big old hammer and I'm just gonna beat that thing in there. Nope, don't do that. That's bad. So, what we gotta do is we gotta press that sucker in there, but now what happens is your uh, jack shaft is hitting up here. Hmm, not good. On the YJs, it's not a problem because you don't have the coil springs here. You don't have the, all that fair. So what we're going to do to be creative here is, luckily, that is some heavy-duty machine stuff. So what do we do? We use that thing right there again. We're going to set it right on top of that. Use that upper surface because that is all one chunk of heavy-duty metal all the way down through there. So let that piece ride right on top of that. And this piece right here comes with your rental kits that you would get from your auto parts store. So this sits on top of that. So you guys remember the Chrysler kit that I showed you guys earlier? They had the, the gray adapters in it. There's one in particular that's kind of special. Look at it real close. I'm going to hold it up right for the angle of the camera here. Thinner on this side, wider on this side. It's tapered. Why? Because your knuckles, your seams right here where your knuckle goes on at, it's high right here and low right here. Well, thin here, thick there, put it that way. So you're gonna take the thinner side of the adapter, it's gonna sit over here like this. So you, when you clamp or your press hits, it's gonna get as straight as possible pressing that ball joint down inside that knuckle, down inside the upper part of the C. So that's what you got need the Chrysler units for. It's mostly because of that tapered adapter and the shorter adapters to get into everything. All right, so we got this thing pressed pretty well set up. And what you wanna do is keep Jimmy and this sucker around until you get this right here as flat as possible, your ball, your ball joint is being pressed into the knuckle as flat as possible. Look at your, this part of the knuckle here, or this part of the C, upper part of the C, 
and this needs to be as parallel as possible. Then you'll rotate this right here till you close your gap up here. That will make sure you're in proper alignment. So whenever you start tightening this down, it's squeezing all this together and everything's in proper place, but to make sure you don't try to press your module in crooked. And again, make sure you press, turn it all around this way. Let it butt against something back there. Cause what, because as sure as you get everything all lined up, you're like, oh my gosh, if it's perfect, I've got my module, it's all nice and parallel with that right there. I've got my gap set up right here. I've got my little adapter, my tapered adapter set and perfect. As soon as you crank down that jack shaft, it turns this whole piece right here, knocks everything out of line. And then you start saying all kinds of, uh, you know, nice colorful words. You don't want to do that. You want to be nice. So take your C part of your press, let it ride against the coils back here. So whenever you crank that shaft, the jack shaft, it doesn't twist that C and knock everything out of line. So now at first, until you start getting some pressure on it, you may have to hold your because right here where the jack shaft is going on top of this right here, it's not exactly, uh, it doesn't have that divot in like all the other adapters do that holds the jack shaft in place. So it can be a bit of a cumbersome bear to make this happen. So let's hope all goes well for this. I love my YJs, so much easier. And you always gotta keep an eye on it to make sure you ain't getting pressed in crooked. Because if you need to, you may have to loosen it up back it up, change the angle on your jack shaft to be sure it's pressing straight and all that fun jazz. Because that top part of my jack shaft is right on that coil right now. Because you're thick and thin side of this adapter, if you keep your watching right here, you will keep that gap closed up there. So I'm going to crank this baby down and I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. Because otherwise this camera's going to go dead. So yeah, there's that. Now to get you guys caught up, I finally got that top wall joint pressed in. Here's my little angled pitched adapter right here that comes with the uh, Chrysler Jeep kit. Again, narrow side goes right here, thicker side goes here, which kind of levels the playing field a little bit. I went to this small receiver tube here, but I changed this top adapter here to where the arbor or the uh, jack shaft actually goes down the side there. And I'll show you where it's at in the kit here in just a moment. But that thing was a beast going in. Did I say anything about me liking, loving my YJs? Yeah. Anyway, uh, the way I had it configured a moment ago, it kept on wanting to put the ball joint in at a kind of caddy wampus angle. That's not good. Here's what you got to deal with. It is all up in that coil spring right there. It is such a pain. So I conquered, but it took me a minute. But I just wanted to, again, catch you guys up to speed. Again, I'll show you guys for this tube. And this adapter where it's at into this is the rental kit parts right here if you wish to rent one at the auto parts store you know like i keep saying so i'll show you these adapters here in a moment let me get this uh press off here and i'll show you which ones i used okay got the press out and you can see the ball joint is completely bottomed out onto the top of the upper c right here off a part of the c i keep saying upper c lower c this is the whole c right here i just upper lower you get the point all right, so here's my little tapered adapter. I showed you guys how that worked out. And this is a separate kit from this. Uh, again, I'll link this up so you guys can get that because you'll need it for your Jeep to do it right. Now, because I was having such problems getting this thing in there, I even went to YouTube myself and what the crap am I doing wrong? And I noticed some of the videos were kind of being shady, okay? So what they were doing is taking this adapter right here. Well, not that one. Uh, this one. Because this one right here, will actually go through there but they were taking it and going up like this right here showing that in the video okay but look there's a problem with that there's the little part of the bar joint that's it and homie that ain't gonna fly but all of a sudden wham they show the video oh look we got the upper bar joint done they didn't show what they completely did okay because one of the guys showed this right here no he started pressing with that and i'm sure no it ain't gonna happen this right here will fit the lower part of the press but as you can see, the bottom part of the ball joint is going to hit right there. Homie, that ain't going to happen. This is the adapter I used for the top of this. So here again, small tube goes here because it sits on that shoulder here, there. That right there is where the jack shaft right here sits inside there. So this will go up here like that, sits inside that. Boom, jack shaft goes inside here. And you crank for dear life, because you're still sitting on the coil right here, but hey, it helps, it worked. Then, of course, you got your little angled adapter here that comes with that separate Chrysler kit. 
people. That was no fun. YJs are so much easier. So anyway, I have conquered the ball joint. Uh, at this point, what we need to do is put our grease caps on from the bottom here and here. And this bottom ball joint is the grease less kind because there's no place up here. Most of the time, you get different ball joints the lower. You get the kind that needs to be greased, the kind that no, don't need to be greased. Most of the time, if they do need to be greased, you've got to have that, like I showed you in the other one, goes at an angle right here, or it goes right here in the middle. Well, this lower one, this right here, does not need to be greased. This top one is a greasable one. Zerk fitting goes in right there, but we'll just, uh, show you that here in a little while. So, whew, conquered. Those of you who have never put in ball joints before, you're going to come to realize, once you get that pressed in, there's a groove in this ball joint right here whenever you had it in your hand before you installed it. That is for a snap ring. Look. Now, don't freak out on me, okay? You can't see the groove, can you? No, you can't. You know why? Because, well, it won't fit. Manufacturers will make replacement parts for various different you know, vehicles. This ball joint fits this you know, 2011 JK, but it can fit some other vehicle as well. And that may require that snap ring to put in. So just because you get that thing snap pushed in, and all of a sudden you say, hey, wait a minute, I can't see that ring anymore to put this snap ring in. You can't see that groove. Don't spaz out, okay? Chill out. We good. So this right here, I don't know. I don't know. Stick it up your nose, make it look like you got your nose pierced or something. I don't know. Ow, that kind of hurt. Now for your upper ball joint, here's your grease cap. You simply get right there and it'll slide right over the end of it and just kind of push it up in place. And so whenever you put your knuckle back in place, it comes up, it's going to kind of ride down from it a little bit. But we'll grease it in a little bit and I'll show you what to look for. Here's the grease cap for your lower. Just come right over top of the spindle and push it up on there. To put on the uh, lower grease cap, inside that grease cap right there, it's got like a wire or something like super, super rigid. It doesn't just press up on air. I mean, just like take and push it, pop right up on air like that one did. You actually kind of get your smaller diameter receiver cup, the adapter to go into that, bottom of your um, clamp here, or you press, and see how I've got that kind of ride to the side a little bit? That's because it's hitting the top part, the upper part of the seat here and just slowly, slowly crank it. You can see it presses it right up on there. Honestly, uh, what I should have done when I put the lower ball joint in, I should have before I put this one in because it didn't have my press and line coming up through the upper part of the seat when it put that uh, grease cap on. But hey, I dropped the ball on that one. So I'm just telling you guys, if you drop the ball like I did, this is what you can do. So put your lower ball joint in, put your grease cap uh, boot on, and use the press to press up on our that sucker. That cup is pretty dead burn rigid. Now when you get ready to put your hub bearing back in or unit bearing, whatever you want to call it, be sure to get you a wire brush on a drill. Go around all this right here, clean off any kind of rust or breathe that's going on because you want your unit bearing sitting against this as flat as possible. And also get you a little bit of anti-seize here. And put it around this surface right here really super lightly. But right inside the surface right here, you definitely want it inside that. Because oftentimes when these rigs get wheeled throughout the water, doing have a good time and stuff, that hub bearing will end up seizing to your knuckle. It is a bear to get off there. You can kind of tell from the surface rust here, this rig right here has been in some water a time or two. And whenever I took that bearing out, it didn't want to come out too easily. So yeah, I bet you, I can tell you they don't have no anesthesia or anything in there. So I bet you whoever worked on this thing at last has been out playing very much so. Which I understand. I get it. I completely. I get it. So... Let's get some grease in this ball joint. Pop your grease gun on. And what you want to watch is as you squeeze the handle, you're going to watch this bulge right here. The cup, the little grease uh, dust boot you put on right here, it's going to swell just a tiny little bit. I mean, just like a minuscule bit. Stop. Because then you've got all the air voids inside there stop uh, taking up. If you keep going, you're going to push uh, grease out of there. Then what you're doing, you're introducing a place to where other debris can get inside and start eating at your ball joint. So, slowly squeeze it. Okay, I got a little bit right there. That's all I want to stop. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Don't make grease squeeze, um, squeeze up out of there. You don't want to do that. And if you got on your lower ball joint, oftentimes you'll have the grease fitting in the top of this right here. But this particular ball joint here is the grease less kind. 
So we're not gonna have a grease fit in that one. Boy, that knuckle's so much tighter like it's supposed to be. The mother ball joints are so wore out. So, on to the next move. I've got my little dollops here of anti-seize, and I use the copper coat stuff, the, the uh, high tip copper formula. I like it much better than the silver stuff. I've got it on the inside here, so I'm gonna put the heavier coat on the inside of this lip right here, but on the outer lip right here, a super, super thin coat. And like I said, I took just my drill and wire brush right there, cleaned all these surfaces off, and do the same thing to your bearing as well. So I'm gonna smear that stuff in there, coat that, and put my bearing and my axle back in. Get you a little bit of anesthesia, put on your threads on your unit bearing bolt, and just kind of rub like it right there. Therefore, it'll be a little easy for you later on if you got to service the bearings. Cool, cool. So after you anesthesia this, clean up your bearing, put a little anesthesia around that. Make sure your cover's facing the right place. See your curl right here, how the flange rolls back? That rolls to the back. It goes right here because that's where your brake caliper goes, okay? All right, all right. So it sits in about like that right there, but once you get your bolts in place, that'll hold itself in place, so. Get your axle slide it in there, and I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod for you real quick. Okay, so you get your cover shield, kind of lay it back over top of the, like this, all your wire here for your ABS. You gotta run it through that gap right here, otherwise you'll pinch it. That sits right in that ballpark there. So you take your axle, feed it on through, get your bearing, and then get your U-joint through the knuckle. Now you got splines up inside there. The splines has got to hit the pumpkin inside, and then this will actually feed up on it in there. So get it in place. Dang, I got lucky. It actually fell right in the splines. So now we're gonna take a cover. Uh, there it goes. Or well, cover me in this thing right here. Now, our bolts. I've got a little bit of anesthesia on them as well. And feed through. Okay, so now i got to walk my bearing back just a little bit so I can get my bolt lined up. Okay, it's so through the cover. The bolt's right here. Rotate my bearing a little bit. Right there. It just fell in place. And what's really good about these bolts is that, oops, hit the camera. See the ends right there? Those right there will help you line things up. Now pause it here for a moment because I just want to say something for you. As you'll notice as you tighten these up, and I'm not saying tight, I'm saying as you get back here and you're cranking on your ratchet and pulling the bearing up, you'll watch the bearing actually start squeezing into the cover plate right here, thinking, okay, now we're actually getting up into the knuckle and getting things snugged up. And once you get to that point, and the bolt back here. Let me take you off your camera tripod for a moment. So like right there's one of your bolts. It's touching the surface now. So once it touches all the way around and you get a good hard snug on it, then you can actually start torquing them down. But again, walk around. It doesn't matter if you go this way, that way, whatever makes you feel froggy. But don't tighten one all the way down, then go to the other one. Do that circular pattern, pull that bearing up nice and flat. Now, I don't know if you guys caught it in the previous shots or not, but I had that bracket right there on uh, wrong. I had this side over here, and I kept uh, looking at my uh, wire here. Let's put you tucked in behind here. Get up back right there. I kept looking at it, said, hey, ain't gonna fit right. Then I finally figured it out that I had these ends were swapped. So yeah, pay attention to what you're doing. Look at your, this is where your uh, drag link, this is where your tie rod goes right here. Uh, this side is going down, I'm on the passenger side. This is pointing down, this is where your drag link. So just so you guys know for reference. And the other side is kicking up right here, parallel with the uh, ball joint. So then you take your wire, tuck it under, tuck it through there, Pull it through and get it over top of where your drag, uh, drag link goes. And tuck it under, keep it on. And this snaps on there. This comes up there. 
then it feeds on back into there. But let me run this real quick and I'll show you how it hooks up. So your ABS sensor wire comes right there. There's that bracket where it's pointing down right next to where your drag link hooks in. Goes under the knuckle, comes up right there. It comes down right there. There's a little clip right that comes down from the brake line. It goes down right beside the coil. There's another clip right there. And it goes up to your plug, which is on the other side of the coil spring, right back there. So remember we put the antecedents on the knuckle back here for the bearing to seat on so it doesn't seize up? Do the same thing, but right around in here. This area right through here, especially people who go playing in the water, the rotor hat here tends to get stuck to your unit bearing right here, and it makes it a beast to come off. So it's normally right around this area right here. So just get your little bit of antecedents, smear around that hub, and you should be just fine. So we've got a rotor hat in place, so I'm going to put your caliper bracket on back here. Once you get your caliper bracket on, you put your brake shoes or brake pads in place. Be sure to watch them little steel clips. You put them in the right directions and stuff, okay? Then once you get them in place, then you'll be able to take your caliper, slide that on there, tighten up your caliper, and you're good on your brake system. Now, as far as your steering linkage, this top one right here is your drag link, which comes off of your steering box right there, which is this right here. As you can see, this is brand new and I have not adjusted anything yet. So that drag link will go here. It will come up. Your stud will come from the bottom, come up, and the nut will go on top. Your uh, tie rod right here, tie rod goes from here over to the other wheel. It will also come up, stud coming up like this, and your nut will be on top. What happens is when you turn your steering wheel, you got your steering box right there. The drag link pushes and pulls this arm right here. And whenever it pulls it that way, like you're going to turn driver or turn left, however you want to look at it, it pulls your t uh, this knuckle that way, but then it, this right here grabs hold of the tie rod, pushes that wheel that way to complete both front wheels turning. I know that sounds elementary. To to some of you uh, people who's more experienced, but hey, there's people out there that might actually teach some, so don't be mean. All right, so I'm gonna slide this baby back together and call it a night. Before we wrap this video up, I'm gonna give you guys a little side shot of it. It's a nice, nice rig. I've done the drag link tie rod, and I'll be doing a track bar soon. Yes, I will video the track bar change out on this one. Uh, but I did a... Uh, uh, LJ a long time ago did a track bar on this so you guys can reference that video if if you need to know before I get to this one the reason I'm going to go ahead and video this one as well even though the LJ and this JK is going to be the same procedure this one's going to have an adjustable front uh, bar on it uh, the paint hard bar or track bar whatever it's adjustable so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that one uh, so that's the only reason I'm videoing on this one I'm also going to shoot a video talking about death wobble, what parts cause that, what parts you need to look at to replace. And I also going to be changing the front and rear differential fluids on this rig right here too, but I'm not going to video that because I've videoed that one to death on several other rigs in the past. So if you need some JK videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But if you've got some friends that need some, uh, some JK vids, tell them to head over to Power X YouTube channel because I've got this rig right here I'm working on. And after I get through with this rig, I've got my toys to get back on. What toys? My YJ, my 91, Rust Bucket, uh, my 93, Rust Bucket. Uh, then the XJ Camper Build. I'm really, really excited about getting into that one there because it's going to be a lot of fun. All the customization I get to do to it. It's just going to be a fun build. So everyone, this sounds like a lot of cool projects you want to check out. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you have it. Appreciate you hanging out. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe. Yeah, leave us some cool comments down below as well. Alright everyone, appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later y'all.